Assalamualaikum and a very good day to Dr. Muhammad Zami bin Osman and Dr. Tengku Syafazila binti Tengku Saharudin. My name is Fatima Zara binti Cik Saupi. Today, I will be presenting my research proposal on title of FECL3 activated carbon developed from corn waste, characterization and application for methylene blue removal. Basically, in this presentation, there will be eight main components which are introduction, literature review, problem statement, objective, significant study, methodology, expected result, and lastly, gun chart. Firstly, for introduction, synthetic dye stuff as industrial waste discharged in water reservoir which cause dramatic pollution in aquatic life and become harmful to the inhabitants. One of the basic dye stuff is methylene blue, which is most commonly used substance for dyeing textile, printing cotton and silk. It does not give harmful effect to the pollutants only, it also gives harmful effect to the humans such as gastrointestinal irritation and nausea upon ingestion, eye irritation including vomiting and diarrhea. So in order to treat this methylene blue wastewater to solve this problem, so many researchers come up with a solution by absorption process by using absorbance for removal of dyes from aqueous solution. The absorbent that use is activated carbon, which is carbonaceous material that have large surface area, well-developed porosity, and lastly, high absorptive capacity. Next is literature review. Colored dye stuff industrial waste came from dyeing and finishing section industries to color their product, and then it will contribute to water pollution and can impart toxicity in aquatic life. And then for methylene blue, it will block the transmission of sunlight into deep down in water. Then, hence it will affect photosynthesis um, organic living and then oxygenation of water reservoir. And then it will lead to several diseases such as skin irritation, eye irritation, vomiting and dermatitis as it has carcinogenic properties. In the era of industrialization, many researchers more concerned on the abundance of agricultural waste biomass and transformation it into activated carbon as it is found out that safe, available at low cost, larger quantities and easily to get from renewable sources that potentially environmental friendly. There are three main components in biomass which are cellulose and hemicellulose as soluble polymers and lignin as insoluble polymers. Hemicellulose will be decomposed above than 200 degrees Celsius and solids will be decomposed at range 250 to 400 degrees Celsius and lignin is um, different from cellulose and hemicellulose as it is insoluble in in water and act as inhibitor to penetrate into, into the water so that the linkage of lignin should be broken chemically or thermally first in order to produce reactive activated carbon. Activated carbon is a group of porous carbon that manufactured by carbonization and impregnated with dehydrating chemicals. So basically, to produce activated carbon, there are two, which is chemical activation and then carbonization process. In chemical activation, is the impregnation process, usually using activating agent with impregnation ratio of weight of activating agent and weight of precursor. In this research, we use activating agent FeCl3 because it is less toxicity than zinc chloride, which is zinc is the heavy metal, and then smaller ionic radius of Fe3 plus will produce smaller pores of activated carbon. And then for carbonization, there is pyrolysis, which is contraction in dimensions of lignocellulosic precursor with increasing in temperature. Why corn is being selected as a precursor? To produce activated carbon, first it's because based on Department of Agriculture Peninsula Malaysia has reported that the growth production of corn in Malaysia is higher than other vegetables due to the higher planted and harvested area in Malaysia. And then thousands of corn waste remain wasted and being abundant and corn cob and leaf has low combustion energy value. For problem statement, Firstly, synthetic dye stuff discharge in water resources and ecosystem as industrial waste and then it will lead to water pollution in aquatic life and become harmful to the inhabitants and human life as well. And then air pollution also occurred because the residues from primary processing of maize are usually 
being abundant and disposed in open air, and then the methylene blue itself will block the transmission of sunlight into deep down in water. Objective of this study are firstly to prepare activated carbon from corn cob and corn leaf by using ferric chloride activation method. Secondly, to evaluate characterization of ferric chloride activated carbon from corn cob and corn leaf, corn leaf. And then the last one is to study absorption of methylene blue and the equilibrium absorption data on activated carbon samples analyzed by Langmuir and Fernlich models. For a significant study, there are four samples. The first sample is modified corn cob with FECL3 and then the second one unmodified corn cob. The, the third sample is modified corn leaf and then the last sample is unmodified corn leaf. For characterization studies, there are moisture content, calorimetric value, thermal gravimetry analysis, Fourier transform infrared FTIR, scanning electron microscopy and then the last one elemental CHNSO analysis. Next, I will explain briefly on the methodology. Firstly, preparation of raw material, which is the corn cob and corn leaf, include washing, drying, and crushing, and then it will undergo impregnation with ferric chloride with ratio of 1 to 1. It will produce modified corn cob and modified corn leaf, while the other two samples, which is unmodified corn cob and unmodified corn leaf, without impregnation. And then both sam um, all the samples continue with the carbonization under high purified nitrogen gas with maximum temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. And then cooling at 600 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius and washing with a solution of 0.1% of hydrogen chloride then with distilled water and hot distilled water and finally cool distilled water and drying in oven for about 120 degrees Celsius and then produce activated carbon of corn cob and corn leaf. Second one for characterization of FAC, firstly thermal gravimetric analysis with the sample take temperature rise in furnace and final weight. For test moisture content, weight in crucible, dry in oven for about 150 degrees Celsius for 3 hours, cool in desiccator and calculate moisture content percent. For calorimetric value, use pump calorimeter, note down the initial temperature, let sample to burn in presence of oxygen, and then lastly note final steady state temperature of water. For FTIR, take sample into cuvettes, Analyze sample in FDIR, observe the, observe the spectra. For elemental analyzer using flash 2000, analyze carbon level, content of hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And lastly, scanning, scanning electron microscopy, analyze the surface structure of sample before and after absorption methylene blue with magnification of 3.0 kx. And for absorption experiment, Firstly, prepare methylene blue into a set of 250 ml of Erlen Meyer class and then agitate in an, in an isothermal water bath shaker for 120 strokes per minute at 303 Kelvin until it achieves equilibrium. Then um, use with different variables with adsorbent dosage of 0.02 until 0.25 gram, initial pH of 3 until 11, initial dye concentration from 30 to 350 mg and contact time of 0 to 180 minutes. And then collect supernatin with 2 micrometer nylon string filter. And then analyze concentration at different time interval using direct reading spectral photometer or UVVs with wavelength of 661 nanometer. And then lastly calculate absorption capacity at equilibrium mg per gram and percentage of color removal. For expected result, Firstly, physical chemical of FAC, we're going to get the result for yield, moisture content, calorific value, and elemental analysis of content, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. So, in order to get the calorific value, we are using differential scanning calorimetry thermogravimetry analysis instrument. From that, we can get the thermogram plot. And it shows that as temperature increase, there is reduction of weight, which is the weight loss of the sample. And then... Uh, for elemental analysis, we are using Flash 2000 Elemental Analyzer instrument in order, in order to get the content of all this compound. Scanning electron microscopy analysis of FAC, we are using same instrument before and after absorption. Before absorption, there will be 
the framework of the activated carbon and after absorption, the framework look more denser and smoother because methylene blue is bind to the inner surface of the FAC. And then for FTIR analysis of FAC, we are using FTIR instrument before and after absorption in order to determine the functional group and it will show the peak uh, at significant band. And then for methylene blue absorption study, firstly the effect of activated carbon dosage, the amount of absorption capacity increase as increasing concentration of methylene blue. And then for effect of initial pH, the removal of methylene blue uptake, it is either affected or does not affected by the pH. Therefore, the pH value is either an adjustable or unadjustable methylene blue solution throughout the study. And then for the effect of initial concentration and contact time as increasing concentration of methylene blue so that the collision rate between FAC and cation methylene blue also will increase. And then at higher methylene blue concentration, so more time taken needed in order to reach equilibrium. Absorption isotherm study is um, the plot of amount of absorbent which is the methylene blue on the absorbent activated carbon as a function of its concentration at constant temperature. So in this study, we are going use the R, which is the, co the coefficient value, either uh, if it is closer to 1, so that we can determine the best fit isotherm, either it is Langmuir isotherm or Freilich isotherm. If it is fitted to the Langmuir isotherm, so that the surface of solid is homogeneous and only monolayer will form on the surface of the activated carbon. While if it is show that fitted the best on the Freilich model, so that the surface of solid is heterogeneous and multi-layer absorption will form. And then for the gun chart, firstly sample collection will be start on October, and then sample impregnation will start last October and early November. Sample carbonization will start last November and early December. Characterization analysis will start on last December and January. Car absorption experiment, analysis of result and discussion, and thesis writing will also start on December throughout January and February. And then this experiment will be conducted for, for about five months. And then this is the reference from this research. And that's all from me. Thank you.